everybody, if you freak out, it's Miss Cash. I am back working more of Mr. Passwater's multiple choice questions from unit three. So big thanks for all the work that he did. Um, okay, so here they're giving us, we're now into inverse trig functions. The quick thing to remember um, is that um, arc sine lives in quadrants one and two. If you think about it, we need every possible sine ratio to show up exactly once. Okay, so since sine is the y value, we want every y value to show up once and only once. And so we get here in the negative direction from negative pi over two, to, and, then, um, and then we get here in the positive direction at pi over two. So if your answer to arc sine um, isn't between negative pi over two and pi over two, you are wrong. Unless they've done some sort of transformation of it, but like this is the world we live in. Our cosine, um, cosine gives us every x value. So we want positive x values and we want negative x values. So we go from zero to pi. So if you try and answer an arc cosine problem and you're not, and your answer is not between or including zero and pi, you're wrong. Arc tangent is similar to, um, you want every possible slope. You want positive slopes and you want negative slopes. And so arc tangent is very similar to arc sine. The only difference is at pi over two and negative pi over two, there's an asymptote. So um, the domain of arc sine, um, okay, hang on, let me write it this way. If I, have, if I have y is equal to arc sine of x, its domain would be hard brackets, negative pi over two to pi over two. That's a two, that's not a two, it's trying to be a two, <laughs> poor thing. Okay, um, and if I had um, y was equal to arc tangent, um, its domain would be, that's colon, it's trying, uh, would be soft brackets. Okay, so they, they behave in this, I mean, they're in the same quadrants, but this doesn't have, it can't be negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 because it's not defined. Okay, um, so it says, here's our function. Uh, what input value in the domain gives us an output value of arc cosine? Oh, okay, so they're mixing arc sine and arc cosine. So basically what I would do, this is almost like um, some of the FRQ 4 part C that we were seeing. Um, but what I would say is arc sine of x is equal to arc cosine of root 2 over 2. Well, arc cosine of root 2 over 2 is pi over 4. So now we're saying arc sine of x is equal to root 2 over 2. So how do I undo that? I take the sine of both sides. Sine of pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2, just like cosine of pi over 4. If we had wanted to be clever, um, we could have said something like, well, uh, we could have said a negative, uh, anyway, uh, we could have changed things like, or, or said two times that, because then you get two anyway, and it changes the equation, but they didn't, so never mind. It was a great problem. Fantastic. Oh, maybe here's one that's going to be a little more interesting. What input value in the domain, not that that wasn't interesting, not judging, I mean, I don't mind judging, but <laughs> whatever, I digress. Um, what input value gives an output value of that? Okay, so two arc cosine, that doesn't enough. I sometimes don't write both C's. Root 3x is underneath the radical, okay, um, is equal to, yields an output value of pi over 2. I'm going to divide by 2 and get arc cosine of root 3x is equal to half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. Take the cosine of both sides, and I am out of space, but I have root 3x is equal to cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So now I'm going to square both sides, uh, which gives me 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So now I have 3x is equal to 1 half. When I divide by 3, I get 1 sixth. That got really messy. I'm sorry. You're fine. Okay. <laughs> and I'm a mess. All right, here we go. Um, we have this one. What input value in the domain gives us an output value? Same idea. So um, let's see if I can be a little more organized with this one. I can say one third inverse tangent, same thing as arc tangent, x root three is equal to pi over four. So multiply by three to make this just inverse tangent. Okay, what is, so we wanna take the tangent of both sides. Three pi over four is in quadrant two. So in quadrant two, the well, pi over four with tangent is, is our favorite because it's just one or negative one. And in this quadrant, the slope is negative. So I get x root three is equal to negative one. Now let's divide by root three. I have negative one over root three, which is also a negative root three. It equals a negative root three over three. Ah, oh, but we stopped here. Okay. Um, which input values yield? Okay, you know what? 
these they're about the same. Let's um let's skip a few of these. Oh uh, same idea as I mean he worded it slightly differently, but basically the intersection of these is saying this becomes the output value of that. Um so all right, here we go. I mean they're fun. I, they just get a little repetitive, so I'm trying to think of what's the best use of my time. I have a lot of grading to do, so you're welcome. Okay, multiply both sides by two, and I get inverse sine of x over root three is equal to pi over three. Take the sine of both sides, sine of pi over three, that means we went over a little and up a lot, so we have x over root three is equal to root three over two. If I multiply both sides by root three, I get three over two, which is an answer choice twice. <laughs> okay, um, see, he's good, but not perfect. Um, I don't know, unless he intended to do that, but okay, same idea here. Okay, oh, these got interesting. I can't believe how much, how many inequalities AP Preak I wanted to do this year. I have never taught so many inequalities in my life. Um, but all right, here we go. Um, what are the values? Oh, okay, e this is an equation. I have taught equations. I love equations, but whew, they threw in the inequalities like crazy. So since I see a cosine and a cosine squared and a cosine, I'm going to set it equal to zero and I'm going to factor. Notice cosine can factor out. Um, so when does cosine of theta equal zero or when does cosine of theta equal negative one? We know our unit circle. Cosine is the x. Here is zero. Here is negative one. Um, so they're keeping us limited. So we want pi over two is pi and three pi over two. There it is. Okay, Oh, so I can divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half, which is this. And so now here's my cheer, square root, square root, plus minus. If you haven't seen that, go look on my YouTube channel. I had kids during COVID help me. Um, so it's plus or minus root 3 over, what's the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is 2. Um, so when is the sine value root 3 over 2? Um, the sine value is root 3 over 2. Um, here and here, and it's negative root 3 over 2 here and here. So this is the pi over 3 family. So it's all four of them because we had to remember to do the cheer, which is that. Uh, same idea here. I don't know that that's worth my time. Same idea here. Um, yeah. Y'all, this is the same. This one's a, um, a, a little bit more interesting. I'll jump to this because it's um, slightly different. Um, so if I have sine of 2 theta equals 1, when does sine equal 1? It equals 1 at pi over 2. So I would say, um, I would when, when I know that this is 2 theta equals something, even though they've restricted the world that I'm living in, I'm going to still say, when does sine equal 1? Right here at pi over 2. And every 2 pi k after that. So the reason I'm going to do this, I'll show you why, is that when I come along and, and multiply everybody by one half, I get pi over four and I get plus pi over uh, plus pi k. So we're here, pi over four plus pi k puts me down here at five pi over four also. So if you had just said, if you had ignored this part, you might have missed that other answer because they both work. Okay, um, same idea. We take... Um, Sine squared is equal to one half square root square root plus minus. When I get one over root two, um, that is plus or minus root two over two. So it's all the pi over four family. Is that the same problem? Okay, well, whatever. Um, so now we're gonna set these two equal. 1 minus 2 tangent of x is equal to 1 plus 2 root 3. Um, the 1's cancel. I can divide by negative 2. So tangent of x is equal to a negative root 3. And so tangent, I always think about slope. So my slope is 0. My slope is undefined. My slope is 1. Those, and my slope is negative 1. So that's uh, 0 and pi. That's pi over 2 and um, 3 pi over 2. This is the pi over 4 family that I've drawn in. And so the only thing that's tricky is... Um, my, my other two slopes to think about are root 3 and then root 3 over 3. So what is more steep? Root 3 is more steep, so root 3 is the pi over 3 family. Since this is a, and then um, the less steep one, oh, that gets a messy, is the pi over 6. Um, so, but this is negative, so we're looking at 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Right there. Um, 
this is what we wanted these two right there ish that's badly drawn anyway okay the intersection of these okay so if i have sine of x times tangent of x is equal to sine of x i would set this equal to zero and i would it starts with an f and ends in actor uh -huh. i'm so funny you just have to ask the right people um <laughs> just kidding okay sine of x equals zero tangent of x would equal one when does tangent equal one um, pi over four and so it's x equals pi over four plus pi k and um what happened and then sine of x equals zero at, at um well pi k so zero pi pi um i think i wonder if um he forgot to change his answer choices I do that sometimes. I copy and paste. Notice that he had the exact same answer choices. Um, so if we were going between zero and two pi, we would have we would include zero. We would include pi over four. Um, we would include pi. We would include five pi over four. Since this is not equal to two pi, we would not include that. But um, my guess is that um, he's going to clean. He'll post this again and after he catches that that he copied and pasted and changed things and forgot to change that. But this is the right answer. Um, how am I on time? Okay, let's do a few more. Um, this one, so we've got the zeros. So one plus two sine x is over cosine of x is equal to zero. So when does this equal zero? Well, it equals zero when the numerator equals zero. Um, but we want to make sure that the denominator doesn't also equal zero because you're not Chuck Norris, you can't divide by zero. So let's see, one plus two sine x equals zero means sine of x would equal negative one over two is negative one half. When does sine equal negative one half? Um, that is, we went down a little, so can you see my, um, so that's seven pi over six and 11 pi over six. And that showed up here. Well, and cosine would equal zero at um, pi over two plus pi k. So we are fine. Um, super. Okay. Oh, we're subtracting. All right. Uh, I feel like we've done something similar to this, but here we go. I'll do it anyway. Um, 2 sine x cosine x. Oh, actually, did you know what property this is? Um, maybe, hopefully, you recognize that this is sine of 2x. If you've done enough trig identities, like I have, <laughs> um, anyway, you see this and you're like, oh, well, this is just sine of 2x. That was very kind of him to expand it out for you. Um, I probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> I probably would have said f of x is equal to sine of 2x. Um, but we can, I'm not a nice person, we can factor out cosine and we are left with this. So when does cosine of x equal 0? That's pi over 2, um, well, and 3 pi over 2. And then here, when does sine of x equal 1 half? Sine of x equals 1 half at, um, I don't know why I wrote x here and didn't there, but pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Do we see all those choices? Pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Why didn't they include 3 pi over 2? Um, let's see if I messed up before we continue. F was this, G was that. We're subtracting. We factor it out. Um, sine is positive, so it should be both of those. But she had both of them here and here. Um, I think it's another typo. I'm going to stand by my work on that one. Um, I, I am not judging because he has done amazing stuff writing all these tricky multiple choice questions. That is not easy to do. So um, there we go. Okay, so f of x minus 1. Oh, oh, okay, this isn't so bad. I see 9 tangent. Oh, yeah, x. When, um, when does it equal? Okay, so the function g is given by that. What are the interval? Okay, so... Here's f minus 1 is equal to um, 0. So here's what I see. I see tangent squared of x is equal to 1 ninth. Now square root, square root plus minus. But I think he intended this to be plus or minus. I think he intended it to be um, root 3 because this is not unit circle friendly. And all of his answers are unit circle friendly. Um, so the best we can do with um, tangent equaling plus or minus one third is do arctan of those. Um, but if it had been, if this had been a three, it wouldn't surprise me. I may have printed this too soon. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he changes this to a three, and then we get one over root three. If this were one, um, if this were um, that, then we would get plus or minus one over root three. There we go, one over root three, which is plus or minus root three over three, which is the pi over six family. So if he changes that problem, that's what I think the answer is. As it's written, there is no answer. Okay, so 
we're going to add these. Same idea, we factor. I feel like I've done that a bunch. Let's look at, oh, here come the inequalities. Dun, dun, dun. Now, for whatever reason, I have found, I have seen other teachers or, or other people do these in a method better than what I've been doing. But for me, I always do the sign diagram. I don't know what my problem is. Or what I might do is I might graph this. I'm really good at I mean, hopefully my kids are too, but we're really good at graphing. And so what did this do? Well, my uh, function went up one. It goes as high as three. It comes back here. It goes as low as negative one. It comes back here. This was two pi. Um, so where are we going to be less than zero from here to here? So let's find what those intersections are and it's going to be in between them. Um, so if I set this equal to zero, um, sine of x is equal to negative one half, which is equal to this one would be seven pi over six, and this one would be eleven pi over six, and so we want the interval between them, which is this. You could also do us um, this and say, okay, here's zero, here's two pi, here's seven pi over six, and here's eleven pi over six, and you could plug in different values and see what happens. But knowing the graph on this one was significantly easier, in my opinion. Um, okay, oh, we want to know where is f greater than g. So I'm going to solve to see where is f equal to g. <coughs> um, when does cosine equal root 2 over 2? Cosine equals root 2 over 2 at, um, at pi over 4 and then at 7 pi over 4. Um, okay, so what I might do, okay, here I might do it this way. Say 0, this is, this is pi over 4, this is 7 pi over 4, somewhere out there, and then this is 2 pi. So we want to know um, when is, well, if I plug in pi over, if I plug in pi into both equations, if I plug in pi, I get cosine of pi is negative 1, this is negative 2. Negative 2 is smaller than root 2. Um, so we wanted f to be bigger, so this is no good. None. I don't know why I wrote that. I wanted to write nope. <laughs> Okay, um, I can, so what's going to happen is it's going to be these all right here, because basically um, my cosine graph will look something like this between 0 and 2 pi, and so um, where was it, and then root 2 is going to be somewhere up here, um, so this would be happening at pi over 4, and this would be happening at 7 pi over 4, and so that's where the f was the curve over the line, um, and so we go from 0 to pi over 4, and then 7 pi over 4 to 2 pi. Yeah, these are, these are, I mean, it's good news, bad news that there's different ways to think through it. Um, knowing the graphs, I think, is huge. Uh, but there we go. Let me do, I'll do this last one, and then we'll come back for another video. Um, okay, so we want to know, well, let's see where they intersect. Negative 2 sine x equals root 3. So sine of x equals negative root 3 over 2. So think unit circle. This is uh, 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And, okay, so I could sketch that, um, or, or we could do the same thing again. If I have um, two, negative 2 sine of x means I still have, I've had a, an amplitude stretch, but nothing else changed, and I went down first because it was negative. And then we want to know, we want to compare this to, well, a positive root 3 is somewhere here. So this makes sense to be 4 pi over 3, and this would be 5 pi over 3. So we want to know when is the curve bigger than the line? because this was the, the sine curve, this was that line. Um, so between 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'll have to go back and watch my previous videos for inequalities, because I think I teach it differently now. Um, or I'm doing it differently now than I did earlier this year. So um, we're all learning and growing and changing and, and adapting to this new curriculum. So hopefully this is helpful. Like, subscribe, comment, all the things, and um, I will continue in the next video very soon.